Um, well, these are three different, very, very different uh, types of equipment. And um, we've been asked a number of times, what's the reason for the names behind these pieces of equipment? And um, for the Falcon SB, that grew out of a very, very ancient partnership that uh, we eventually bought the partners out of where we had a device called a Super Bowl. And uh, so it, uh, it, it, it morphed into becoming the Falcon SB machine. The Falcon C is just to denote that this is a continuous concentrator, one where you have one stream of particles going into it and two coming out. And the UF, the UF stands for ultrafine, which means that uh, this is a device that handles particles that are finer than any other gravity concentration device in the world can handle. So the Falcon SB is widely used and most widely used and applied within gold grinding circuits, where the idea is to recover as much gravity recoverable gold as possible before the um, ore goes on to other treatment steps such as flotation or cyanidation. So um, in this particular environment, uh, we've uh, you know, pioneered the use of uh, this, this type of equipment on different ways of being applied within grinding circuits. And uh, it's by far the largest application we have of gravity concentrators. Where did it, which one started? Which was the first piece of equipment? So in ancient, ancient, ancient times, well, this all started with something that doesn't appear here anymore, which was the Falcon B, so-called B bowl. And the Falcon B bowl is really the genesis of these other three types of machines. It was a very, very simple device which had no fluidizing water, no riffles, just simply a cavity within which concentrate would accumulate. And uh, we started and tried our best to get that introduced throughout the world and found that really uh, we were going to go broke if we stuck, stuck to that particular theme. So the Falcon B morphed into three separate subspecies. And I would say that the UF most closely resembles the original Falcon B. Um, we still use a variation of the Falcon B bowl to do laboratory test work, but we do not supply the Falcon B anymore. What was the insight you were working off of when you, when you were trying out the B bowl? The, in, the insight was really that um, it really gets down to finding a device which didn't, which was capable of recovering very, very fine gold, which, but, but which did not require the use of any fluidizing water. So the, the, the niche market that was, uh, we attempted to exploit was being able to recover finer gold than um, anyone else could recover it while at the same time not requiring a lot of fluidizing water or any fluidizing water. Um, and uh, we had some success with it, but uh, wasn't enough to really sustain a business. What went right and what went wrong with the design? The design was very, very simple. And, uh, and in fact, uh, practically nothing uh, there was nothing on it to go wrong. Um, we also, in, in that early, early machine, developed the way that all batch type concentrators are, um, are, are emptied automatically, which is we have a rotor baffle at the bottom of the bowl where, which expels material when the concentrator is running at concentrating speed and uh, which allows uh, concentrate to escape underneath it when the bowl is at, uh, during, going through rinsing. So that went very well. The problem we finally identified was that in order for this B bowl to work correctly, we could not have any coarse, uh, coarse gang particles associated with the feed and the, going into the, into, the, into the bowl. So where we had very, very fine gang, minerals 
and gold, fine gold, we were able to make a very respectable recovery. But where we had coarse particles uh, in combination with fine gold, we had a very big problem. So in grinding circuits, we're not considered. Um, in some cases, we had successful operations in treating cyclone overflow or feed to flotation or cyanidation, but that was really not of great interest to the mining industry. So that went that went quite badly wrong. Um, but the, what what uh, Emmett, what eventually grew out of it was the UF Bowl, where we worked, where we resurrected the old B concentrator for a client in Canada, and uh, were able to demonstrate that we could get substantial recovery at size fractions unheard of previously for enhanced gravity concentration levels. Although we're able to get meaningful recovery below 10 microns on, say, specific gravity 7.5 particles. So then based on that, to improve the applications in grinding circuits, there was a version that's created with the fluidization water. That's correct. Which is now more widely equipped. That's that's absolutely correct. We we that became that coming out of that original Falcon B bowl uh, came the Falcon S B and uh, that was a fluidized uh, a, a partially fluid, fluidized. partially fluidized uh, bed. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, we were able to make a market penetration because um, it was only partly the the wall of the concentrator was only partly fluidized and customers found. Uh, the fact that they could inject less water to be very attractive. So we made uh, we made substantial headway market-wise and business-wise once we introduced that that concept. Now, do you think that also having the unfluidized zone plays into better fine particle recovery in the SP concentrator rather than having a fully fluidized bowl? I I do. Um, I, I think that uh, there's a zone inside these bowls where gold actually accumulates below this fluidized zone, which is extremely fine. And I've, I've actually witnessed this on a number of occasions. So the very, very, very fine gold that might be flushed out by fluidizing water flowing in and carrying very fine gold to tails. Some of that very fine gold gets captured in zones that aren't fluidized in this uh, falcon concentrator.